the deployment of soldiers to kill innocent civilians was illegal, criminal, brutal, callous by the central regime in Harare. Even if they say it's coming from the state, there is a head of state, which is why my brother Nelson Chamisa wants to talk to the head of state. You know, these guys are beating about bushes. Violence of 2019 was coordinated from a certain point. We need people with the capacity, people with solutions, not people who are part of Agenda 2030 when they are not even sure if they will be there. These people have, have, have uh, uh, actually exposed their weaknesses. In January 2019, the nation experienced violent protests which led to the death of innocent civilians. Um, there was an internet shutdown which led to Zimbabwe being isolated by many foreign countries. In a bid to redress the situation, there was a call for national dialogue, but indeed the efforts were fruitless. We are reflecting on Zimbabwe's 2019 economic and political environment and what could be done in 2020 going forward for the future generation. This is the street talk. Uh, 2019 was not a good year for lots of citizens here in Zimbabwe. It started off with uh, violence, political violence that took place on the, from the 14th of January. We saw property loss, uh, we saw death of uh, innocent people, while at least those people who are not innocent, the guilt ones, are still alive. So whenever we have such type of violence, we lose innocent lives. And these lives are exposed to death by some people who benefit after such uh, killings. So what, what we need to do as, as a country going forward is to avoid uh, such type of violent clashes. Uh, you see, we have indicated that uh, international community had to give Zimbabwe their back. They turned their back to us as a result of violence. Internet shut down, uh, came later after uh, a violence. So what we need to understand now is for a country to prosper, we need peace for a country to go forward. We need our politicians to understand that they are wherever they are because of the citizens of Zimbabwe. These deaths of innocent citizens must come to an end. And to avoid that, the people who cause or who call for these demonstrations or for this violence must be brought to book. Because they are alive, those people. That's why we see a continuation of uh, such acts. The deployment of soldiers to kill innocent civilians was illegal, criminal, brutal, callous by the central regime in Harare. Number two, it was immoral, in my view, because you are going to unarmed civilians and unleashing live bullets. And I think that there was a commission of inquiry that sought to investigate this. And in my view, the response of the central government was seen when those who were perpetrators of violent activities being promoted and redeployed in international arenas, particularly for diplomatic missions, proving beyond any shadow of a doubt that Zimbabwe is under military capture and military regime under authoritarian tutelage. First of all, before we ask and for MDC, we are all Zimbabweans and we have to, to sit down, we have to unite and try to find a way, a way forward. And I am hoping that uh, one day uh, our leaders will set aside their egos, they will not be selfish as, 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 as they have portrayed themselves to this day. They will say they, they, they have to put the interests of the people first before the interests of their political parties. Because I think uh, you, you have heard my, 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 my brother there, Ostalos. He's from the MDC. I'm from ZANU PF. Uh, it, it, it didn't even take an outsider to bring us here together. We asked my friends. I knew Ostalos was here. And, and, and I said, no, I'm going to come because he's a brother. We, uh, we... So, in your own thoughts, you still think that Poland is the way to go for this country to move forward? What I think is uh, whether either Poland or no, no Poland. As Zimbabweans, we must just find a way to dialogue. We must find a way to, to dialogue. The problem is, you have uh, President Munangagwa say we must dialogue. You have Advocate Chiamisa saying we must dialogue. But they continue to give each other uh, terms and the conditions for, for the dialogue. Uh, there is a lot of uh, toxicity in our politics. There is a lot of polarization in our politics. So I think if our leaders are very sincere, they then have to set aside those differences and try to find a way forward for the good of Zimbabwe. I'm not going to speak on behalf of, of a political party. or for, I'm trying to speak for my generation. Yes, I come from ZANU-PF and my comrades come from 
maybe coming from the MDC, but I don't think it's now still time for us as young people to continue to parrot uh, political party positions instead of pushing the generational agenda. Those who have the responsibility, who have made sure that a bitch dereliction of duty is their main, you know, main mission. Those who have failed to provide employment, those who are, you know, the kingpins of corruption, the archbishops of corruption, those who, who, who sign mega deals day in, day out. I think for the past five years we've seen mega deals being signed and more, they were more intensified I think the past two years. But there's nothing to fruition. We've seen unemployment on the rise. So the solution to all addressing this, I think it's generally engaging young people, it's engaging the generation of Zimbabweans and not deploying soldiers. The question of legitimacy as a political scientist to me is about the social contract. For any society to function economically, it needs to have a social contract, which is basically a definition that defines the relationship between those that are being governed and those that are governing. And in my view, we must restore the social contract. And that's why uh, I agree with my brother Godfrey around the issue of a conversation. And in my view, the conversation beyond, goes beyond uh, the Tom and Jerry's masquerading as leaders in Poland, but goes to the need for a social cohesion of Zimbabwe social forces. You are talking about labor, you are talking about students, you are talking about young people, you are talking about politicians, you are talking about business, so that people have a common position. And the reason why we want a common position is because at the center of any policy that a country would want to make, there must be consultation. And when there's consultation, everyone will then support the position of government. And in my view, that is the essence of the need for dialogue. And it is urgent as anything else. And number two, one would also want to know what is the way forward. And the way forward, in my view, also goes around the economy. The reason why we want to restore the social contract, because we want to at least restore the dignity of the suffering masses of our people. And how do we do that? The most urgent issue in Zimbabwe right now is macroeconomic stability. We need to resolve the economic crisis in this country. Number two, economic reforms. Economic reforms in the sense of how does the banks, the central bank relate with the you know, uh, other banks, how does it relate with the, all, all the people within the money supply chain? And it's a very important thing because right now people don't trust these brick and mortar buildings that we are seeing known as banks. So when they don't trust the banking system, people are keeping their monies below the mattresses. And when there's confidence in the banking system, it means you are going to be able to have money for, uh, uh, circulating within the formal uh, 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 channels of government. Number three, you obviously need to resolve the currency question in this country. And how do we resolve it? In my view, it's simple. We must return to the basket of multiple currency regime because the bond notes and the Zimbabwean dollar was caught in flagrant delict and Zimbabweans have no trust in the bond notes. So once Zimbabweans come together, we resolve the political question, we are able to resolve the monetary question in this country. Number four, as Zimbabwean so, uh, uh, citizens were then able to go back to the question of industrialization that company Marco was talking about. When we industrialize, we are managing in multiple uh, uh, problems in this country, issues of importation. Zimbabwe is a commodity economy. We are literally importing everything. If I look at you from top to bottom, almost everything you are having outside your soul has been a product of, of import. So that is the current challenge. So when we are able to industrialize, it means we are able to have a stable economy, we are able to have employment, we are able to create a, a, a foreign direct investment. And the fifth issue, obviously, that a dialogue with resolve. It will end Zimbabwe's long uh, international isolation. Where forces come together, they're able to then relocate themselves within the United Nations Montevideo Convention. That Zimbabwe is a society where citizens are in cohesion and are agreeing to take the country forward. And when we end international isolation, we are resolving the vicious cycles of corruption, vicious cycles of violence. So in, 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 your, in, in other words, you're simply saying that with, if we are then, if the leaders and also as the nation are to engage in dialogue, then the, inter, the international, um, this whole ice being isolated by the international community, it will then come to an end. It is without doubt, because international isolation is a product, as I've said, of contradictory electoral outcome. And in my view, when we resolve that question, the electoral contradictory question, where everyone, the contestant in an election, are able to accept the result, and that is about the credibility, the transparency, the openness of electoral process. And once that is resolved, we are then able... So dialogue provides a platform where people can convince about the next plebiscite, so that when we come out of the next election, the 
there is consensus whether the winner is Zanupe for MGC, there must be consensus between the loser and the win. Not a situation whereby the loser want to cajole and would wink the, the other part to support uh, the electoral outcome when they are not satisfied with the processes. I'm going to move to um, my sister Precious Musarurwa and I wanted to shed more light because in January 2019 the issues, alleged issues of women were raped by the same by the same army that also was deployed where civilians were. So Precious, we want your views like during occurrences like this where there's um, some confusion and unstabilized and, and our country is not stabilized what should take and what could be done to protect women and young people and how also did the internet shutdown of 2019 affect you as a young person in zimbabwe well um i would say my opinion at this moment does not or would not really matter uh, the, we, we, await, we still await the Montlantra Commission to be, in terms of the recommendations, to be implemented. Um, he has spoken, he has spoken, and uh, everyone is speaking. So, really, what I would basically say is, let us stop this blame game. Who is suffering? Uh, when the elephants fight, you realize that the grass, it suffers. The civilians, the ordinary people, are the ones who are suffering. How are we suffering? Social economically. So what do I mean if I say social economically? The reason why these people were on the streets in the first place uh, was because they were trying to address, they were trying to put forward issues of concern. That was freedom of expression which was supposed to have been respected. But in response, we realized that uh, there was violence. Actually, I would, um, from an NGO perspective, non uh, non governmental perspective, you realize that it did not just begin with the, the soldiers and all that. It began on the streets. When we were supposed to demonstrate what activities did we get ourselves into? Did we break properties? Did we become criminals in the process? Um, that also could have justified to a certain extent, uh, to a certain level, the reason why we had the army coming in and reacting in also a violent uh, nature. It is not justified. However, that's why I said we still await, await the Montlante Commission. On women's um, um, uh, sexual abuses and all that it, uh, it is mostly unavoidable when, you find, uh, when we find ourselves in uh, war zone areas or areas where there's uh, civil unrest and all that where the justice delivery system is totally distracted um, maybe focusing on other re issues that are not uh, human rights related in terms of protecting the, the, the people in their communities you realize that um, we as women and we, other women organizations, it is our duty and responsibilities to ensure that we capacitate other women uh, so that they can criminalize the, 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 these people and ensure that they take just the, the justice delivery system uh, effectively. It is our duty to, to, to ensure that the constitution is appreciated politically, socially and economically by all Zimbabweans, which is a duty of the government as well as the political parties as well as the civic society organizations. So for me, I would say uh, as women's organizations, it is our duty to report any cases that are, that are there of, uh, of sexual abuse, regardless of it being the army, and let's not exclude other sexual abuse cases that are more than the, of, of this special event that you're asking me. That's why I'm saying my opinion, rather, on this specific scenario regarding uh, women's uh, sexual abuse, it rather does not matter, but the attitudes of men in our country, generally, is what is important to identify and, and work with. You know, these guys are beating about bushes. Violence of 2019 was coordinated from a certain point. Those people who are said to be innocent, who were killed in January 2019, were coordinated, organized, and mobilized by somebody. The deployment of armies, my sister has said, usually they say using a bigger weapon against a smaller weapon is not an offense. What led to the deployment of the army? We go to the issue of dialogue. You know, these politicians should understand that we have the power as citizens more than they do. Combining ZANU-PF Politburo members and the MDC National Chakuti members together, if they vote, a council will not win against the masses of Zimbabwe. I don't think they exceed 500 in terms of numbers. So when they come here to talk of dialogue, Poland is there. But I think the problems of this country will never be solved through Poland. It needs a political maturity from both political parties. We went to elections. I voted for the candidate I wanted. Everybody here voted. At the end of the day, we had a winner. Let's agree that we have a government in place to start with. The moment you need a passport, when your passport expires, you go to a certain office. In that office, there is somebody employed and appointed by a certain person. 
using his constitutional power, who happens to be the president, is the registrar general. Whenever you register a Kamban, you go to Zimura. They tax you even you register, but there is somebody at Zimura. So you're simply saying we need to do away with the illegitimacy battle? No, I'm not saying we, I'm not saying we need to do away with the illegitimacy issue. We do not have time to discuss about legitimacy at this point in time, except for fewer politicians who need to, to uh, I think, who are beneficiaries of this. What we need to do right now, we have Ostalos from MDC, we have Tsenengam from ZANOPF. All they are saying is we need dialogue, we need dialogue. But they are failing. Because, to, because all of them have, have their no, condition. Because they are not respecting the people's will, both of them. Because they are not suffering. Advocate Chamisa is not suffering. And Our president is not suffering. Over and above all, all these politicians, all those people who contested, 24 presidential contestants, there's nobody who stays in the high density. They are all in the low density areas. ZANU-PF is, Zanu -PF is, is alleged to, 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 to I, I think the, the ZANU-PF gurus, the ministers, the political members are said to be rich because they steal from the government. But the same vehicles that ZANU-PF gurus drive are the same vehicles that MDC guys drive. Who are they stealing from? So the issue that we have here is, uh, as my brother has said, that political ministerial appointments must be apolitical. It's very unconstitutional. There is no ministerial appointment which is apolitical. It's in the constitution. The appointments are political, but those people appointed should work for the people of Zimbabwe. We need to put to an end this attitude of saying this one is illegitimate, this one. Because for as long, you know, I, I stayed in the rural areas. It's not easy even for a headman to set the position to the next person. The moment we agree that there is a president in place, Whoever has an idea should take that idea to that person in the position for the benefit of Zimbabweans. Otherwise, these arguments will cost more uh, innocent, innocent lives. And those innocent lives, look at it. We agree that we lost innocent lives in January 2019. Innocent lives. Who are the guilt? We have people who speak the constitution, who speak democracy, who speak the rule of law, without understanding the actual meaning of those terms. They have their own understanding, which is political. So you're simply saying that we need our politicians and those in power are the ones who need to change. Then we won't have the problems that the ordinary Zimbabwean is facing, especially prices. We need to bring big power to the general populace of Zimbabwe. He who is blamed for deploying army in the streets of Zimbabwe is the legitimate president of Zimbabwe. If he is not, then why are people crying for deployment of army? Why, why are we not having Nelson Chamisa deploying army? If army can be deployed by a person who is not a president. Before we continue on this legitimacy battle, then I think Makombora has been burning to say something. But I hope this is not about the legitimacy and the illegitimacy. Yeah, yeah, no. But it's about... Even if I am to give reference to legitimacy, it's a different form of legitimacy. You know, because in Zimbabwe, we have is someone who calls himself the president. And uh, we also have to highlight that the main problem in Zimbabwe is the issue of social contracts. Why you keep your money under the mattress and not put it in the bank? It's supposed you don't trust the bank. They have duped you before. You have deposited your trust before and been given bonus. So what do you so, think needs to change? So, so the, the question number one is, I want to, I think, just to put my word on legitimate issues. In uh, November 2017, there was a subversion of the constitution. The person was not president, deployed army in the streets, and the whole country united because that person was promising reforms, you know, economic reforms, electoral reforms, political reforms. Then we went to elections. They were, that person who claims to have won elections doesn't even know the percentage or the, the, the number of votes that they got. It, it's a fact. But then Zimbabweans tolerated saying, I know, he, this person promised us uh, reforms, economic reforms so that we have food on our tables, economic reforms so that we have employment, political reforms so that we have a, a better Zimbabwe in the future. That person has failed. And uh, the illegitimacy that Nanga really needed, the coaxing for his power was performance illegitimacy. Of which what he has failed. Price X is poor performance. He did delivered, but he came telling us that he has investors, came telling us that he has links with business, big business. But we are Aliko Dangote and crew saying they cannot invest in Zimbabwe because they were asked for bribes. You know, such things, it's all about, you know, reform. So even if we were to have any dialogue whatsoever, it should not be about power sharing. It should be about reforms, political reforms, economic reforms, to ensure that there's no corruption, to ensure that if we put our money in the bank, we'll get it back, to ensure that we have affordable prices. We need, you know, it's the basics that, that, that is needed. And I don't think it's a crime for anyone to really demand that, you no, know, let's have a, a dialogue on reforms. Because in the first place, when Emerson Mwanga came into power, when they deployed soldiers in the streets, it was on the base of promising people reforms. They were saying Gabit failed the post Zimbabwe and everything. But uh, 
and that they were coming to give us reforms. And it's what we want. And if uh, let me tell you, if you were to be found right now in Zimbabwe uh, at affordable prices, if workers are to earn you know meaningful salaries, you will not see soldiers going become mashruk. You will not see police officers pickpocketing the streets. We will not see demonstrations. If there's employment, you will not see even these vendors or touts. If there's you know, so it's a matter of performance legitimacy. Okay, firstly, I would want to say. Uh, I would want to make an appeal to, to my comrades here that they must uh, stop uh, speaking on behalf of their political godfathers. They must start speaking on behalf of themselves and, and their colleagues and their, their generation. For as long as we continue to speak as ZANU-PF and MDC, uh, we continue to have, uh, to have challenges. Ask him if he's going to afford uh, lunch. It's some hours, some two or three hours from now when we must be having lunch. He can't. Can you? No, but our leaders can. From ZANU-PF and MDC, they can. And why do we continue to, to parrot their positions when they are not in our shoes, when, when they are not facing the same problem that we are facing? Like when, when, when you see Advocate Chamisa in a few queue, uh, journalists will rush. To, 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 to take him photos. Why? Because they will be acting. It's not real that they don't have fuel. Even, even those from ZANU-PF, it's not real. I, I think for me, what these politicians are trying to do is to continue to try and hype their supporters in preparation for 2023 to continue uh, holding on to their flock so that they don't uh, lose hope in their leader to say, we will do this, we will do that, we will do this, we will do that. Because look, uh, their councillors, even their mayors, are working with the illegitimate president. Gomba, for example. Yeah? They are working with him. Their MPs got diplomatic passports from an illegitimate government. They got cars from an illegitimate government. They are getting into hotels. They are being given allowances. So and, and also, let me point out that, and despite also working out on the president um, and the parliament, they actually agreed to go to Vic Falls exactly. and to hotels. But anyway, that's a story for another day. You, <laughs> you were saying, you were saying. No, no, it's okay. So, so what I'm saying is, even if they say it's coming from the state, there is a head of state, which is why my brother Nelson Chamisa wants to talk to the head of state. He wants to talk to the head of state. He, he knows that there is a head of state. You get it. Which is why even when Mbeki came in, he went to see the head of state, he also went to see uh, the leader of the, uh, main, the main opposition in Zimbabwe. We cannot run away from the fact that uh, uh, President Munangagba won and Chamisa had uh, two point something million. You cannot ignore that. Which is why, uh, which is why I was saying even to my comrades in his NPF, that the president has already humbled himself by going to uh, the table and, and in, uh, talking to other political leaders who do not even have a large following. What does it take even to, 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 to talk to, to Chamisa? And, and by the way, I'm, I'm tempted to think that these guys are playing games on us. Why? Okay, I, okay. I need... Wait a bit. Wait a bit. I'm saying they are playing games on us. Why? Because when, when, when Changarai was still in charge of MDC and Mgabe was in charge of ZANU-PF, there were accusations to say, Chamisa Munwa Munangagwa. And whenever Munangagwa was being attacked in parliament, Chamisa would always come to Munangagwa's rescue. Why? Because they, they, they know each other. They call brother, they, they are brothers. And everything. And, and, and now, I, I, I was getting from, from some other guys in the MDC who would say, uh, the, the problem that we face now, it is not because of either Chamisa or Mnangagwa not wanting to, to talk. It is about uh, some hardliners in both uh, institutions who think they may lose out if, if, if Chamisa goes to talk to Mnangagwa and Mnangagwa talks to, to Chamisa. This is where the problem is. So I'm making an appeal to my young brothers here to say, you and me will continue to suffer for as long as we continue to, uh, to help these politicians rob us of our, of, of, of our future. These people have, have, have uh, actually exposed their weaknesses to a person like me in my individual capacity and as the civic society. Um, in that, 
I thought we were going to, to speak more on solution-based responses to our situations so that we can clarify some of our political challenges that, in fact, affect our social economy. What is much important for me is the social economy. Hence, um, this platform has also influenced my capabilities, my capacity and my influences in the civic society in that we, I, now, I can now safely say that we have a platform and opportunity to direct and um, and uh, coordinate tasks that influence uh, unity uh, in the social economy of Zimbabwe in terms of responsive uh, approaches. Um, therefore, as Zimbabwe together, uh, with a scenario like this, I would say it's impossible. It's, uh, since we have empirical evidence uh, since our last elections that socially, economically, politically, as Zimbabweans in the elder sectors or spheres and the younger generation spheres, we have failed. We have totally failed. And I appeal to you guys... I still say guys, because we are in the same uh, generation. I appeal to you, ZANU, PFM, DC, and all other political parties to come and join, be a member and join, contribute effectively to, to, to our strategy, which is to create a strategic channel for leadership, communication, and development of um, uh, responsive approaches that are democratic to our sustenance uh, in terms of our social economy. Um, basically, I have also realized that um, most of you are not appreciating that uh, politics is actually affecting the social economy. However, it's supposed to be the social economy influencing our choices in terms of choosing our members of parliament who go into parliament to represent us. But it's ironic, it's unfortunate that we are not preaching social economic development. He's talking about this social uh, coercion and all that. He's talking about uh, economic development and all that. No one is talking about production. You are talking about employment, employment, being employed by who to do what? When have we realized that we have a responsibility as a Zimbabwean people, that we have a responsibility to come together and bring together multi-focused um, uh, democratic uh, responsive approaches to deal with our, 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 our social economic issues. It automatically deal with our polit political issues. But our, however, our situation is such that the politics control the social economy. And um, now going back to the, the, the dialogue thing that you were talking about, dialogue. We went to the courts, the opposition failed to produce the V11s. I would safely say that in my individual capacity to prove to us that for the past 19 years, the 18 years they have been uh, in the opposition as the big opposition party, they have failed to ensure that enough uh, representatives were these polling stations. So much that it gave, if, I, if we were to agree that the ZANU-PF and ZEC stole the election results, then we would agree that they let them. If you claim a president, just deliver. Why do you have to uh, do you go there to blame the opposition? Do you go there to blame marginal enemies? Do you go there to blame in marginal? And I think it's a clear and call to all young Zimbabweans, people for our generation, that we need people who have the capacity, people who have solutions, not people who is part of Agenda 2030 when they are not even sure if they will be there. People who part of Agenda 2030 when they cannot even provide electricity in the now, when they can't even provide us with food in the now, when they can't even give us jobs in the now. People who part of you know massive industrialization, you know, reindustrialization, when they can't even make sure that people go to school. Uh, I've, I've, I've not seen any meaningful uh, development either in the MDC strongholds, uh, in towns, there is a lot of sewage, there is a lot of uh, things that we think they should have. That, that, yeah, so I, I'm thinking that uh, as we just need to come together as, as young people, as a generation, uh, at, 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 a, at a better platform where we can share ideas and try to find each other and not continue to rely on, on politicians who want to continue to, to use us for their benefit. Thank you very much, uh, Munyama Siwa, your party. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to task the youth of this country, everyone who is 40 years and below, to come together and find ways of pushing the government to put solutions to this country. The solutions are to re-dollarize this economy. We need to go back to the multiple currents that we had before. We need to go back to a, 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 an economy that is controlled by US dollar. And also we need to make sure that we push the government to, to, to make sure every program is passed through the parliament. No government program should bypass the parliament. Precious, your parting shots. Well, um, young Zimbabweans, I'm still uh, calling out to all 
all of you under the age of 40 years, over 18, to come join us um, and be part of the National Unifying Symposium, which I'm hoping will have everyone here, being part of the uh, collective that will uh, speak the Zimbabwe we want and communicate with the respective offices and authorities. Uh, we are hoping to, to, to get a response year in, year out. As my brother Kudai said that we need to encourage all the youths to put pressure on the government so that it delivers. The first step is to recognize that there is a government in place. The second thing that we need to do is not only to speak about the constitution but to practice it. It's, it's very sad, I don't know who said it, uh, that in November 2017 there was a coup, soldiers were deployed in the streets, we supported thinking that the deployment of soldiers would justify reforms. So you see Zimbabweans are confused. At one point they celebrate deployment of soldiers. At the other point they denounce you know, deployment of soldiers. Over and above, or we must not rewrite history. Who deployed soldiers in 2017? Emerson Mnangagwa was in South Africa. So what we need to do, to conclude, is to have responsible people who does not only speak the constitution but put it into practice. My sister, we shall never make our lands fatal by adding gravel to them. Elections are passed. As even my sister, I will attend your symposium, but it will not save the rightful purpose. What we need to do is to redirect the mindset of these politicians into knowing that we have the power. We went to elections in July, we voted for whatever that we voted for. At the end of the day, we had a winner. We need to support the government in place. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I would uh, share my publications and intellectual material to my fellow compatriots so that they appreciate the role and the importance of intellectual rigor in shaping political and socio-economic development in our country. But my parting shot is that uh, I agree with a number of compatriots around the need for us to reconvene and open the future whom the present is holding in suffocation. The intention of it, thereof, in my view, is obvious, and I will say it without fear of contradiction, that we must replace the vicious cycles of exclusion with the literally virtuous cycles of inclusion for the betterment of our society and the future of our children. There you've heard it. We were talking, we were reflecting on Zimbabwe's 2019 economic and political environment and trying to make way of what could be done different in the year 2020 going forward, especially for the younger generation. This was the Street Talk. See you next time.